Alright, it's uh, August Bank Holiday weekend now. Um, thought I want to try and get the rear window on the BX done. Um, so I obviously rolled it up a few weeks ago. Um, I've since spent a little while trying to find a window for it and not very really been successful in terms of finding one that's affordable for me. Um, so what I found is uh, some perspex of BQ. Um, I've cut it down so I've got two bits to try and trim into some shape. Um, so hopefully with any luck, um, finish off the work there, make sure that there's no rust there that's developed since, because obviously there's a lot of blue rain since. Um, so just walk around the back to where the workshop is. Um, bought the Mark 1 out so I can have more space for the BX to work on it properly without being restricted. Um, but I've just I'm having a rather good um, look at the Mark 1 just right now that you can hear. Um, now, when it overheated and did head gas a good prop a few months ago, um, it got very, 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 very hot. Um, and the time I thought, okay, it, it's definitely going to hit gasket, um, but do we do the bores and swap the liners and pistons for the spare engine I've got into this block? Um, effectively, you give it a rebore, as in normally you'd um, take the block from the machine shop, you'd make the uh, cylinders bigger oversized pistons in. With these you can just take the wet liners out, put new ones in, hey press they reboard it. It's I'm not sure if it's cheaper or what but hey how that's how it works on this. I've got a 15,000 mile engine in the other garage with balls and pistons that will go from that straight into this should this ever need it. Um, now we're wondering on this occasion because I'd like to get the bodywork done as well do I pull the whole engine out, do a full rebuild on it, use the donor bits in the other engine obviously at the same time you're doing the head gasket and skimming the head on this anyway um, and then, while that's out, take the body and get that um, stripped back, repainted nicely, so it looks like a pucker. Um, and I've been kind of on and on thinking, do I or don't I, do or don't I? And at the moment, um, if you listen to this, so um, quite often, if, a, if an engine gets really, really hot, it can also suffer from piston ring damage, where basically, essentially they slightly melt where, where you've got um, essentially you've got your ring that's basically obviously round but then it's actually square on top and bottom edges and that is what this sort of helps keep the piston up and down straight like that but then when they wear out is when you then get the piston slapping around backwards and forwards now when it gets really really hot you can actually end up where the um, piston rings get damaged which then gives it the same effect as being warm but it's because they're essentially very fractionally changed shape because they've got so hot and then got and then got and then cut they've basically gone out of their sort of tolerance of normal operation and then they change shape and it causes the piston slap. Um, now rather rather unbelievably, because I honestly thought this was gonna have it, um, listen to it. You can't hear it. If I, if I unplug the fan a second. Here we go. Sounds as pretty lousy as a one litre Mark 1 ever does. But. It's tapetier noisy as it always is. But there's, I can't hear pistons that which is blooming good news. So um, on that note let's just plug this back in. Because I can already hear the bubbling coming out from there. But the upside is. That means we can get the bottom end has still got some life in it, which is blooming good news. Because it means I can take the head off, get it skimmed. Um, because I've no doubt that that head will be walked after I got hot it got when it did it. Um, get a new head gasket, clean it all up, put it all back together, and that engine will be good to go for a few more miles quite easily, I reckon. Uh, if it was the BX um, and it had the same thing then because of how much extra work has to be done for a BX's head gasket, I would do the bottom end probably. But because that one is so blooming simple, um, I'm not partic I'm not really worried if it if it if it does another obviously it doesn't do very many miles each year anyway. Um, because it's just it's just although I love driving it, it's just not um, not geared for modern day roads, to be honest with you. Um, you'll be you you can get overtaken by blooming lorries on in that thing on a blue motorway because lorries do 56 on their limiters that will be sitting about anywhere between 50 and 60 depending on if it's a hill or not um it was originally designed on a city car so yeah um 
it doesn't do the most amount of miles, so therefore, um, <coughs> do a gasket on it, and it's not like we're going to be taking it apart in another six months time because bottom end's now given up because of the fact it's done more miles. So, yeah, um, I think in the time I've had it, um, I think I got it on about forty-one thousand. I think it's now on fifty-five and a half. So in the seven years I've had it, I've done about fourteen thousand miles. And obviously, three of those years it wasn't even on the road at all. So yeah, it kind of tells you. Um, classics do kind of get a lot less noise put on them for that particular reason because um, they are. There's, there is a difference between modern and old, which is the fact that the modern stuff is sort of built to modern day uses and standards. So. I was back in those days, they were still learning about X, Y, and Z and what was required. Obviously, the higher spec models did have more gearing, etc., for um, longer distance, but that was base spec, so that's what you got for around town. But yeah, so that's um, that's exciting for me because um, the idea of having it off the road <coughs> completely. Denny, sit down. Sit down. Denny, sit. 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 Good boy. There we go. Um, yeah, the idea of having that feel off the road in many, many, many pieces was getting me slightly overwhelmed um, and a bit kind of almost stuck in thought paralysis of, oh, how do I do this? How do I approach it? And to be quite frank, having keeping the engine in nice, in, in running order um, is nice because it just means that you've got one less thing you've got to faff around with if you when it, do, it does go to body shop. So, whereas obviously... If um, if I was focusing on wanting to do the engine as well, then it's just it makes a, it puts a whole lot more thought into it and a few more aspects to worry about. So yeah, I'm well, happy. So that means that um, get get the engine head gasket done. So you just do clean everything back up at the top, stick it all back together, and things crossed. Yeah, it should be good to go again. Um, but we do want to get the bodywork done because the longer I leave it, um, the more um, like where I sprayed the rear quarters with um white hammer right because it's self primer so it's just a very easy job at the time. Um it is going the sort of showing its poor prep and everything else and poor adhesion now because it's it was only meant to be a temporary job and that was nearly, that was a year ago. Um so yeah it'd be nice to get all the blue work done so it looks fairly good. I'm not looking for a perfect carb, just one that's in good usable condition in such a way that it's not going to deteriorate while being used so but yeah she, she's a lovely old thing and she's um it's one of those situations where i say to someone um i've, I've been off people say to me would you say it? it was like well find another one <laughs> if if you want the experience then find another one it took me eight years to find one this early in this spec because i was particular as i was am about things so yeah yeah Lovely. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed that instalment on Mark 1. Um, I rather look forward to, um, I might might even do a little um, a video, actually. I might try and put my phone above the bonnet so you can see me take the engine apart because I've got a ridiculous record on one of these for getting, well, in general with the Clio engines, for getting them apart and back together. So, yeah. Because <laughs> I've done quite a f I've done, I haven't, I wouldn't say I've had a few few cars, but I've had quite a few engines I've done their gaskets on them now. So, yeah, I've got a good old record for taking them apart and put back together. They're just, to put it in very simple for fashion, there is only that many spanner sizes to get the entire head off. Yeah, simple. But yeah, I'll leave it at that. Um, thanks for watching.